In this video, we're going to tell you about a company that has done a sustainable business model innovation in practice. The company is Interface La Jacob. Yeah, it's a company that makes carpets. And they went from having a linear model to a circular model. They went from a product logic model to a service logic model. And they went from working largely on their own to being more collaborative. If I remember right, Lars Jakob, uh, Interface was established in the United States in the 70s. And they made wall-to-wall -wall carpets, is it right? That's right. And they typically sold them to commercial customers. And the business model was basically, you know, produce the carpets, uh, make them available for the customers, sell them, and that's the end of the story. So it was basically a regular manufacturing company with huge factories and logistics and a sales organization. So they made changes in the whole way they created, delivered, and captured value. It started in the 90s, or the company started way before, but this transformation started in the mid-90s. Ray Anderson was asked to, to say something about the, the vision, the, the sustainability vision of the company, and he really had to rethink the whole way they did their business. He said that they were really more of an environmental bully, and all this thinking led him to set an ambitious strategy, which he called Mission Zero. By the year 2020, so some 25 years later, Interface should have a zero footprint. So Ray Anderson and his team, they had to retell the story of how Interface worked. And this was a business model with significant shadow sides. Uh, there was lots of petroleum used to their business model. The old carpets ended up in landfills and the production and transportation of the carpets was really using lots of energy and leaving a big footprint. So how then, Lashakop, did they make money on turning a carpet into a service? Well, they started out by actually redesigning the product. So this was the company that started selling carpets as tiles. This, these were wall-to-wall -wall carpets, but they started making small quadratic tiles so that you could really, instead of change the whole carpet, you could really just change the parts of it that needed changing. So, so this is an example of an access-based economy then? It became an access-based business model because they realized that they couldn't just sell the small tiles in just the places where uh, the carpets were worn out. That wouldn't be sufficiently profitable. So they changed the business model, or rather specifically, they changed the payment model. They went from an ownership model where the buyers of the carpet owned it, let's say it was a hotel or an office building, to a model where Interface retained ownership to the carpet through its entire life. And what they were now offering was a complete solution whereby they would come to the hotel or the office building and change the carpet whenever needed. One other thing they did was to redesign the carpet itself so that they could get the textiles away from the other materials in the carpet at the end of life. This allowed them to put the old textiles back into new textile production and the same for the other materials. This made it possible for them to get a higher resource utilization and also to drive down the unit cost of each square meter of carpet produced. Today, for instance, they're collecting discarded fishing nets in, in, in Asia and are using this as an input factor in new uh, carpets. Uh, they're also turned into uh, a service in, in the way that they are now a consultancy firm for other companies that are trying to rethink the way they are doing business. These are really collaborative dimensions of the interface business model. They're collaborating with the collectors of discarded fishnets and they're collaborating with other companies who are in need of advice and role models in their own quest for a more sustainable business model. So if we compare then, Lars Jakob, the, the business model of 1994 and, uh, and today in, in Interface, what, what changes do we see? Well, if we think about the Interface case, it's really a series of changes that add up to, like you say, uh, almost a set of business model innovations. And it started with Ray Anderson setting this ambitious target, Mission Zero. From there, they started redesigning their products they started redesigning uh, the way these products were uh, delivered to the consumer uh, and, it, and also the payment model that the customers had vis-a-vis -vis the company. So in some sense, one change perhaps led to another. 
And it's not like Interface is the perfect company. They are probably not truly sustainable in a strict sense. So even though this is a company that has made lots of big changes, there is still room for improvement. So take a look around you, the companies around you. How can they create, deliver and capture value in new ways? Can they become more circular? Can they give access to products instead of selling products to customers? Can they capture value by offering a subscription model, for instance? In what way can they decrease their footprint? What kind of problems are out there that they can solve for customers and other companies in new ways? This is sustainable business model innovation in practice. Making a more circular, low footprint economy that still offers good solutions for consumers whether in the form of products, services, or a combination of both.